Melanin Monarchy citizens. This is your Queen Monique here with another concert review. And this time we're going to be discussing Echo and the Bunnymen who are here in San Diego 2023. Let's get into this concert review. <music> Now, as you guys know, this channel is all about commentating and reviewing live music, films, and other creatives, all with a strong emphasis on Depeche Mode. And speaking of Depeche Mode, let's get right into Seven Degrees of Depeche Mode. Now remember, Seven Degrees of Depeche Mode is where I like to link the artists that I've seen live with Depeche Mode in seven steps. So here we go. This was pretty easy. Echo and the Bunny Men uh, did an album back in 1987 by the same name, Echo and the Bunny Men. And on that album was a song called Lips Like Sugar. Lips Like Sugar was directed by none other than Anton Corbin. And as you devotees know, Anton Corbin is like the other Depeche Mode member, right? He's a creative director. He's not only a photographer, he directed videos. And he's even des uh, stage designed their tours, right? Including... This current tour, Memento More, he designed the stage for that too. So we love everything that Anton Corbin does. So there you have it. There's your seven degrees of Depeche Mode with Echo and the Bunny Men doing Lips Like Sugar, Lips Like Sugar videos directed by Mr. Anton Corbin. And Anton Corbin is basically the creative director of Depeche Mode. Okay. Now let's get into this concert discussion. Lips like sugar, sugar kisses. Love that song. One of my favorite songs by Echo and the Bunny Man, except I didn't get to hear it. I didn't get no sugar. Like my girl Narina used to say to me, give me some sugar. I didn't get no sugar over here. Neither did anybody else who was at that concert. Um... I like to give about 24 hours for the artist or band to respond uh, when things like this happen. You guys know from my previous videos that I've made on this sh on this particular channel, the Echo and the Bunny Man, they walked off. They walked off stage. So I wanted to give them at least 24 hours uh, before I formed an opinion and before this taping. So at the time of this taping, they have responded They on their on their website, Will Sargent, who's one of the founding members, did a uh, statement. So there's a picture of him and then there's a statement at the bottom basically uh, explaining that they canceled the San Diego show. They're going to uh, hopefully uh, reschedule it. That Mac, who they like to call him, I like to say Ian McCulloch, right? Because when you're researching, you call people by their by their full name. But Mac, he, uh, he has some voice issues, right? Voice issues. He couldn't go on anymore, so they're they're rescheduling this show. And I thought that that was a wise choice because it protects the brand, right? And it also protects William Sargent's own brand. My issue is that it wasn't a video. I didn't see a video anywhere. It was just a picture with a statement, and I'm wondering why Matt couldn't do the same thing. I guess we're here later. If any of you guys, you guys have seen the video or whatever with with their statement from their camp, definitely uh, send that to me. I, I want to I want to give everybody in this particular situation a chance to respond. I just don't want to have have formed my own opinion without all the information. But I'm not really ever going to have all the information. So at the time of this taping, this is the information that I have. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about this from a fan's perspective. I want you to keep that in mind. We're talking about it from a fan's perspective. Now, guesstimating, when you're going to any kind of large or any kind of live event, right? A large live event, 50% of the people that's at the event are they're not fans. They're tagalongs. They're the partners of the fans. They're the partners in life. They're the destiny partners. They're the partners in crime. Okay. Now, 50%, the 50% there are fans, about 30% of that, again, this is just a guesstimation, about 30% of that, and, and of my own experience, 30% of that are the B-siders. 
they know the B-side, right? They're fans. They're in it to win it, right? They're, they're the hardcore fans. Again, of that 50% of the fans that are there, about 20 to 10% know some of the music, right? Um, they may, may even know all of the music, but they're first timers. This is the first time that they've seen this act live. I fell into that category. That was me. Okay. That was me there. Now this show happened on a Monday night. I've been to many concerts on weekday nights. Um, I, I've even done a video, a video of, it's called 10 mistakes that concert girl make, makes. It's basically a pre-planning before you go to a concert. The suggestions that I have being an avid concert, go and have an experience doing this, right? And so when you're attending a concert on a weekday night, especially a Monday night, most of the time people ask for the time off. But if you didn't get a chance to ask, ask for the time off, that's if you're a working person, you didn't get a chance to act up ask for the time off, then after work, you're going to be basically rushing around to get yourself together, right? You can, you need to get, get dressed, get your house together, you know, get out, find parking. If you're like me, you like to find off street, I mean like fight to find off street parking and you, you know, to get to the venue, we're not even going to talk about getting a nap in because you know, we of a certain age, we need our rest. And so you may not get a nap in. I didn't get a nap in that night. So you may not get no rest. You're not going to get on that. And then let's not even talk about eating, right? If you eating in the evening time, you may not eat. You may not eat. You may eat uh, after the show, which was some, or you may eat something after the show, some junk, something greasy, whatever the case may be. You may be going to this, to this concert or to, to this event hungry. Now throw school, school age children into that mix, throw that in there. Or if you're taking care of an elderly parent or family member, it's like mission impossible. Okay. This is why a lot of people don't go. They don't go to concerts at night, especially on a weeknight. They just don't go because of all the logistics that's involved in going to a show. Now I made some notes here, so I'm going to be looking and kind of reading my notes because there's a lot there's a lot to cover, right? So basically when you're going to a show on a weekend night, you're, that's what you're looking at. You're looking at, um, all of those things, getting yourself together, not getting any rest, maybe going straight after work, uh, getting your family members together, paying babysitters, doing whatever you have to do to get yourself mentally and physically ready to go to the show. Also, again, we have a certain age we, we don't really like to go out like that. We don't like to be, we like to be in the bed by nine o'clock. We like to be in the bed under the covers by nine o'clock, all right? And then you going out someplace that's a little bit chilly. You got to stand in line. Um, and so we don't, we, standing, right? So not only do you stand in line, this particular show was at the North Park Observatory here in San Diego, which is general admission standing room only basically, right? So we got to mentally prepare to not only stand and wait in line, but when we get into the venue, you got to stand, stand through the whole show. So we're talking about three or four hours of standing you could be looking at, right? So that's something else that you have to consider. Also, we just came out of COVID three years ago, about three years ago. And a lot of us are, are have just come out of that fear of being in, in uh, areas where there's a lot of people, right? Being in enclosures or whatever, where there's a lot of people. You're just coming off of that fear, right? And, and be, because music is therapy. Music is a healer, okay? Music soothes the savage beast of our mind in our life. This is why we do it. We do it because we told ourselves, we promised ourselves the next time that person is in town, come hook or come crook, I am going to go see them, right? I'm going to do all these things to go see them. I want you to keep that in mind when you're, when as a concert goer, going to a show on a weekday night, Okay. So that's the point of view that I'm coming from. And this ended up being a sold out show. It wasn't a sold out show earlier that day, but it ended up being a sold out show. So there were people here in San Diego that really were excited about seeing Echo and the Bunny Man. Now, I want to reference a, um, a, another YouTuber because when you have an artist who walks off stage, like what happened here in San Diego with Echo and the Bunny Man, First Mac and then the band members walked off stage and then it was like some roadie. It didn't even look like it was somebody from the from the management team from the tour. Some some roadie came out and said, Hey, you know, Echo and the Bunny Men, they they're not gonna be performed tonight. They canceled. We're gonna reschedule. Hold on to your tickets and bam, that was it, right? 
But I want to reference this YouTuber. Uh, uh, the name of the YouTube channel is MVMO. And she talked about Lauren Hill and uh, the thing that Lauren Hill did not too long ago here in LA by being almost three hours late. Then walking out on stage and then gaslighting the audience. She says something like, Lauren Hill says something like, um, uh, you better be lucky that I came out here. You don't know what I had to go through to be in this position or to even be here. I'm doing God's work. I was like, girl, bye. Girl, bye. Shut your, shut up. Really? No. What you're doing is you're being abusive. You're being abusive. You're abusing. You're slapping your fans in the face by being three hours late, by being late. You slap your friend, fans in the face. You sucker punch your fans. This is why I won't see Lauren Hill anymore. She did that mess a couple of years ago. And I was like, oh no, never again. Never, never, never again. I can't do that. So this is the kind of thing that uh, artists will do that's bad behavior. And when artists, creatives are have, have some bad behavior episodes, we have to call them out on our on their bad behavior. We have to tell them about themselves on their bad behavior. And so you when you have an artist that gets on stage, sings a couple of songs, says something unintelligibly that nobody else really can hear, right? Sings another song and then don't even peace out. Just walk off the stage, leaving the other band members looking like, what the, what happened? What just happened? And then they, they put their instruments down and they walk off stage. When you do stuff like that, sir, you're abusing your, your fans. You're abusing us. Okay. You're disrespectful. You have no integrity. You're rude. You just abused us and we're not going to take it. No, sir. We're not going to take it. Okay. So I'm just like, you know, people are looking at me and be like, you know, well, Monique, you can get your money back. Well, can I get my time back? If you pay for parking, can you get that back? If you purchase food or whatever, or drinks at the venue, you gonna get that back? And it's not about the money. It's about the experience. People go to concerts to have an experience. They want to, in this case, you know, they want to experience the music of yesteryear, but they come to get an experience. They come to relax. They come to rejuvenate. I, I keep telling you that m music is a healer, right? And there's just something about being there in the presence live. So they exchange their money. They're happy to do that, to have that experience, to have those memories, right? And your behind gonna walk off and just walk off. So, oh, my voice was hurting. And people are like, dang, Monique, his voice was hurting. What the heck did you want him to do? Right? If he got a health issue, what did you want him to do? Take a page from Andre 3000 and flute it. You had a cello on the stage. You could have celloed the whole set. We wouldn't have known the difference. You could have talked. Matter of fact, you could ask one of them 30% out in the audience that know all the B-sides. You could have had them come up on stage and sing. We wouldn't know. We would just be like, oh, okay, this is something new. All right, let's do this, you know. But no, that's not what you did. Because that's not your character. That's not what you did. You just decided, I'm just going to walk off, right? And so we have to decide as fans, we have to decide as audience members, how much abuse or how much of this are we going to take? We have to really make that decision, okay? Because I, got, I don't have too much time on this mortal corridor to be playing around with these people and doing all this foolishness. And I know you guys are all like, dang, Monique, you know, you you really harsh on them. You know, you need to forgive them. Anything could have been going on. No doubt. I, 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 I don't doubt that. I don't doubt that. Okay. But here's the thing. You cannot make excuses from people. You have to just go off with the information that you have, that they gave you. Okay. So they can't be surprised when... You act a certain way. And even though people just walked out orderly, they were really nice. They were like, okay, we're just going to go, you know. But but this channel, we ain't going to let you do that. And I wonder, would you have done that if you were in L.A.? Because they were just at Darker Waves, right? They were at Darker Waves outside of L.A. at Huntington Beach. It was three stages, a bunch of uh, artists. I, from what I heard, I didn't get a chance to go. But everybody else that I know that went had a blast, right? There was even a, fans 
that was at this Echo and the Bunny Man show who were at Darker Waves and decided to not see them there because they knew they were coming to San Diego. We're not even gonna talk about fans that may have traveled Mexico, LA, up north, wherever, right, to get there. We're not even gonna talk about that, right? So you rescheduling, that may not be that may not be an option for a fan. It may not be an option, okay? You decide you're just gonna walk off, right? I'm not being harsh, you guys. I'm not being harsh because this channel is all about being an advocate for creators, being an advocate for musicians, being an advocate for them, right? How many times you look back at any of my concert reviews, I am always saying, you guys, go to their shows. You guys, buy their merch. You guys, make sure you're attending. This is their bread and butter. Make sure you do this. They're, they need to recoup everything that was lost during COVID, you guys go ahead and support your favorite artists, right? Show them that you love them. Show them that you appreciate them, that they, all that they've done for you through their music and you appreciate their artistry and their talent and their genius. You guys definitely do this. You're going to get an amazing show. It's just worth it. You guys, how many times am I going to say that, right? I am an advocate for them. I'm an advocate for them. But when we love you and you treat us like this, oh no. Oh no, <laughs> I'm not going to let you get away with that. You're not going to come to my city where my children were born at, you're not where I live and act like this. Cause you, your behind wouldn't act like that in LA. You wouldn't act like that in New York or Vegas or whoever else. And if you do, then that's a discussion for me and your management that we need to have. And if I were you management, I would definitely put it in. If you don't already have it in the contract to say, you know what, you're going to walk off. Then we're going to have some serious issues. You, cause that's what the management is there for to make sure that you have everything that you need to kill it on stage, have everything that you need to kill it on stage. Okay. I want to tell you guys a story. I'm going to tell you a, a, a little story that happened to me. 2007, my mother passed away, turned my world, flipped it upside down. Didn't know if I was coming or going. What I started to do to kind of deal with the grief and heal myself was revisit music. At the time, I wasn't listening to a lot of Depeche Mode at all. I was raising kids, you know, wasn't listening to them. So I went back and started listening to the music that I enjoyed, that I loved, that made me remember my life when I was younger, right? Uh, before my mother passed away, just, just be, be, when I was younger. I was listening to gospel and praise music and Christian artists and things like that. But I was really, really listening to Depeche Mode. She passed away in 2007. 2009, Depeche Mode came out with their album, Sounds of the Universe. They also was touring Sounds of the Universe. Bought my ticket. Now, it was about, it was over $100 for a ticket. Over $100 for a ticket is really nothing now. Right back then it was because I felt like I was taking food out of my baby's mouths by buying this ticket. Their dad, he wasn't a Depeche Mode fan. He wasn't going to go. But I knew that I had to go. I had to go. Right. I had to do this thing. They end up canceling their San Diego show. Dave Khan had some kind of, um, he had a lot of health issues. I believe he had cancer like close to his gallbladder. They had like removed tumors or whatever. And he was just, you know, str struggling health wise during that tour. So they canceled a few of their shows trying to keep their obligation um, for throughout the tour. I was devastated. I was devastated, right? And there were some guys at my at my job who made me a bootleg one night in Paris tape, right? To try to make up for it. I'm giving you this story because these are some of the things that concert goers go through, that fans go through when they're going, when they're coming to see you, right? When they're coming to see you because they love you so much and you dump all over them or you just, you just throw them to the wind and you just like, okay, well, you know, I'm just going to walk out or whatever. I'm going to tell you about yourself. I'm going to tell you about yourself because nobody appreciates that. You're not going to waste my time with this foolishness. You're not going to, and we're going to tell you about it. And we're going to tell you about yourself. But the reason why a lot of us do this, a reason why a lot of us do this, because we kind of like, we got Stockholm syndrome. We make excuses for this bad, this bad behavior. Monique, you need to forgive or whatever. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. I am not, I, I just don't have time for it anymore. I don't have time for people to mistreat me, mistreat my time. You know, treat me like, oh, oh I can just walk off on you. No, I'm going to tell you about yourself. Right? So 
And the reason why a lot of us make excuses for these artists when they have bad behavior, when they do stuff like this, the unpopular truth is that we put them on God status, right? We idolize them. We worship them. They're celebrities. They're famous. You know, they were blessed enough to uh, have this talent that took, because we all got some kind of talent, that took them further than a lot of us have gone, right? They had whatever they dreamed of doing, they were able to accomplish that. So we put them on this status and we decide we're, for whatever reason, because, you know, we, we somehow think that we're lower than them. That when they do stop, we make excuses for them. We excuse it, right? We don't want nobody to think anything. Like, oh, not me. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Now, the question is, all right, Monique, are you ever going to go see them again? Ever going to go see them again? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe if they're co-headlining, maybe. I don't know. You know, again, I hope they're listening. There's, there's still time to fix this. There's still time to fix this for some of us. Other of us, we ain't doing that. We're not gonna, we're not gonna do it. We don't, we don't have time. We, it just, we'll, we'll listen to you somewhere else, but we're really not going to support you like that. Okay, we're not gonna support you like that. We're not gonna give up our coins for this type of behavior. This is type of, is this because we don't know, we don't know. Who we going to get? If you got multiple personalities, we don't know which personality we going to get that day, right? You going to pull a Morrissey stuff, right? And just do things like that. We, we, we don't know. So we have to make a decision whether you're worth it again when you treat us like this, when you disrespect, when you're rude, when you are, you don't have no integrity, when you, your character is flawed. We, we just don't know what we're going to get. And a lot of us are just not going to have it, right? We're just not going to do it. Now, the good thing, the great thing about this, me going to this concert as a first timer, was there was an opening band by the name of Fox Tide, F O X. T-I-D-E, Fox Tide. They're a local band here in San Diego. These, these young men did an amazing job. Now, you guys know me. I don't care too much for opening acts, right? You throw an opening act up there, I'm just kind of like, whatever, right? I'm here to see the main main act. Main. But these young men did an amazing job. And if I'm not mistaken, they were called earlier that day to do the show and they gave it their all you could tell that they gave it their all and i met them while everybody was walking out right in orderly fashion nobody's in on really order i met them in the back and they were so sweet so sweet so humble so grateful right so grateful i want you guys to find these young men and sh and encourage them encourage them show them how much you appreciate them uh because what they're doing, you guys know, artists is 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 a hard road. I'm an artist, you know. I'm a writer and producer. My brother's an actor. My son's a musician. My sister's a model. My father's a drummer. We have my cousin's a drummer. We we have all types, of my you know, of of musicians, rappers, singers, artists in my family. In this family, that's the kind of stock that we come from, right? Being from Detroit, that's 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 just who we are. So I say. Definitely go find Fox Tide and encourage them, you guys. Encourage it. So that's it. That's it for this concert review. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, follow, do all those wonderful things. It lets me know that these things are of value. I love giving you this content. I love giving you this history. I love bringing to you these concert reviews or these reviews from an average consumer's perspective, right? Because I want you to get the best out of this life and this experience, because regardless of what anybody say, this is your only experience. This is going to be your only experience and it needs to be the best. If you can, we don't have control over much, but we want it to be the best experience, especially for me. Like I said, I have, you know, another 70 years because I'm going to be here until I'm 120. But I want the rest of my life to be one of just joy and wonderfulness. I can't control when people walk off the stage. I can't control when people are late. I can't control when people got health issues or whatever. Uh, the, there are some things that I can't control. It's the manner in which it's done, right? It's the class and the grace in which when these things 
happen and occur. So again, like, subscribe, share, do all those wonderful things. If you guys have other information, you got the inside scoop, go ahead, let me know, put it in the comments, do all those things. Just, just give me the information and I'll acknowledge, acknowledge it. Okay, you guys, I love you. I love you. I love you. Toodle pip.